This is a reading of Woods Runner by Gary Paulson, chapter six. As he walked, Samuel felt as if he were following some kind of killing storm. Even the tracks seemed savage. From the footprints, it was evident that the prisoners tied together were constantly jerked and pulled to increase their speed. The prints were scuffed, ragged, and he felt his mother's anguish terribly. She was small and thin and very strong in her own way, but this brutal treatment, probably with a rope around her neck, might be too much for her. If she were too slow, they might... He could not finish the thought. The shock Samuel felt since he had come upon the devastation in the settlement and dealt with the bodies had left him numb. Now it turned to anger, anger coming into rage that it was worsened because he had to remain calm. He had no idea what to do except to follow his parents' tracks. He saw their footprints now and then. He had to follow and rescue them. How could he do that, free his parents? He'd have to wait and see, wait until he knew more. He would learn by studying sign. He could not forget himself and his skills now. The people who were leaving the tracks were the people he had to deal with. He had to understand them by the time he caught up with them. He stopped and tried to slow his harsh breathing, tried to still his mind and remember all that he had taught himself by studying trails and the surrounding ground. It seemed that all of the captors and captives were walking on the trail, but there might be others off to the side. Quickly, he started to swing to the left and right of the trail. It was mostly grass and hard to read. But at last he saw scuff marks and some moccasin tracks and open dirt. They had scouts on each side of the main group. On the second swing, he found the first body. It was a man in his 30s who had been picking berries when they come upon him. He must have had a rifle or musket. No one would be out in the woods without some kind of weapon, but it was gone. Along with his powder horn and possible bag, he had been scalped, mutilated. Sadly, there was no time for Samuel to give him a decent grave. He scraped a slight trench with his knife and covered the body with a minimum of dirt. He bowed his head and then went back to the trail. Covering the body hadn't taken much time, but it upset him. As he walked on, he tried to still the shaking of his hands. He picked up his speed and came to a clearing of the next settlement before he was ready for it. He thought he knew what he would find. It was just a few cabins, but unlike Samuel's home, it had a name, Draper's Crossing and it was gone. At first it seemed the same devastation he had found at home, smoke rising from burnt cabins and shed, but when he stopped, he saw he wasn't alone. On the southern side of the clearing, there was a figure. It was an old man. As Samuel approached, he saw the man was spading dirt with a wooden shovel into a mound that was clearly a grave, and he was singing. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Samuel stopped 10 yards away. He saw no weapon, but he stood ready. Rifle held across his chest, thumb on the hammer. As the old man patted the dirt with the shovel, Samuel could see four of the grave mounds where the cabins had been. The man said in a sing-song voice, there to sleepy little darling, there to sleepy with the Jesus boy. All to sleep, little darling, all to sleepy with the Jesus boy. Samuel coughed, but the old man did not turn. Jesus came, the Jesus boy came and took them all up to heaven. How long ago were they here? Samuel finally interrupted the man's song. The man turned toward Samuel and kept his singing. Lordy, then the Jesus boy came and took them all to heaven. There was Draper and Molly, and they came in and took them all to Jesus boy. 
How long ago, how long ago, can you tell me when they were here? In the dark they came, took them all to the Jesus boy, took them all, but not old Bobby, no sir. Didn't take old Bobby because old Bobby, he sat eating dirt and pointing up at the Jesus boy and talking through his ear holes, ear holes, and they thinking old Bobby was teched, but it wasn't so, it wasn't so. Water, is there food or water here? Wasn't teched at all. Just knew how the Jesus boy could save us, save us. So I sat there eating dirt and laughing and praying. With piercing intents and other odd, otherworldly green eyes, he stared, but not at Samuel. He looked through Samuel at some far place that only he could see, only he could know. He pulled up the shovel and started walking off to the south where Samuel could see one more burnt cabin. Beside it lay what looked like a pile of rags, but Samuel knew it wasn't, one more body. Now he remembers something he had heard about the Indians, considering that he had lived his whole life on the frontier. He knew very little about them and what he did know, he had learned by listening to adults, to rumors and stories they sometimes told after they had a little too much hard cider or black strap rum. <clears throat> he remembered that some tribes saw crazy people as graced by the higher power and that they believed that old people who did not think straight should be protected or at least not harmed, which is why they had let old Bobby go. Maybe he's crazy, Samuel said aloud, watching him walk away with the shovel and maybe not. Either way, he's alive. He turned back on back to the trail. If old Bobby was right, they had come in the dark, probably just before dawn, if they stopped to rest at all. That meant Samuel was gaining. That meant he had to keep moving. The world. The war for independence was rapidly turned into something like a world war. Native Americans fought on both sides and Spain got involved on the American side, or at least its Navy did. Germany sent the mercenaries known as Hessians. The French were staunch ally of the United States, which with their Navy keeping England from resupplying her troops and distracting it from the American Navy. The English Navy in fact was so preoccupied with the French, they could not focus on the American problem. <clears throat> 